All right then, so now we've built our backend API, which sends requests to OpenAI to get some AI generated content. So it grabs that and then it sends that back as a response to the clients. Now, I wanna make a front end web page to hit this API and do something with those responses, like show them in a browser. So the first thing we need to do is make a public folder for all the public files accessible to the browser, including our HTML file and any other assets that we might need like a style sheet or images. So let's create that first of all. And in order to tell Express that this should be a public folder available to the browser, we need to use a little bit of middleware. So underneath where we use the JSON middleware, we can say app.use to use some more middleware. And then this time we're gonna say express.static and invoke that function to say that we want to make use of a static folder, which is in our case, gonna be the public folder. So we say to express, look, this is the folder public that is gonna be accessible to the browser, okay? So now we'll be able to access any of the files inside this folder at the root of the application. So just localhost port 4000 forward slash and then the name of whatever file we want from inside here. All right, cool. So now we've set that up, let's add some HTML and CSS to this public folder. Okay, so I'm gonna add a few things to this folder. First of all, an index.html file. And then I'm gonna add a styles.css file. I'm also gonna add in an image. I'm just gonna copy this across. You can get this from my repo. It's just the YouTube logo. And then after that, we also want an index.js file because we will be using a bit of JavaScript to send those post requests to the backend. All right, so inside index.html, I'm gonna do doc. And right here, we'll say YouTube meta generator. And then we also in the head want to link to the style sheet. So link and the href is gonna be forward slash styles.css. At the bottom of the body, we'll do a script tag. And the source of that is gonna be equal to forward slash index.js. All right, so oops, that needs to go inside quotations like so. Okay then, so now we have those four files, let's flesh out the HTML and the CSS. Now then, instead of me writing out a whole bunch of HTML, which is what you're not here to learn, I'm just copying this from my repo. I will quickly walk through it though. This is just to save a little bit of time so you don't have to watch me type all this out. So we have a nav at the top with the image of that YouTube logo inside it. Then we have an H1 that says YouTube Video Data Generator. Then we have a container which surrounds everything else. Then we have a form at the top for the metadata. So we give it a class of meta form title and then a label for the input span to say video title and then the input itself and then a button to submit the form that says generate metadata so that's the first form then down here we have two divs one for the description and one for the tags this is when we get a response back from OpenAI, and then therefore back from our api on the back end when we get that we're going to output the description we get back right here and the tags that we get right here okay so that's the first form, and that's gonna be sending a post request eventually to forward slash OpenAI, forward slash meta to get the metadata. Now the second form is for the image, so we give that a class of image form, a title, then a label, a span for the label, which is describe the image, the input itself where we describe the image, and then a button to submit the form to generate the thumbnail. So again, that's the form for sending a post request, this time to forward slash OpenAI, forward slash image, I think it was. And then when we get a response back from our Express app with that image URL, we're gonna update this image URL right here, this image source. Now at the minute, this is just a placeholder image, which is a gray block, but that will get dynamically updated via our JavaScript when we get a response. So that's pretty much it for the HTML. And now we can go to the CSS. Again, I'm just gonna copy all of this from my repo over here, woohoo. So feel free to grab that. I'm gonna copy and paste right here. So we have the, bo uh, the body with a few basic styles, then P tags, again, a few basic styles, the container with a max width to hold everything in the middle. Then we have the nav at the top, just with some basic styles, display flex, so the image and the text sit next to each other. Um, the image in the nav, we give a max width of 70 pixels. The forms themselves, a background of red, and the color of the text is white inside, text line center, bit of padding, strip out the margin at the bottom. Every element inside the form, that's what this asterisk is, 
we say display block and the margin is 10 pixels top and bottom, auto left and right. Now, where we output the description eventually, the tags and the thumbnail, we give that a background of white, a bit of padding, bit of margin, and a border which is dashed as well. The thumbnail, we say text align center, so the image will sit in the center. For the inputs, background of gray, strip out the border, bit of padding, border radius, width, and margin. Uh, the buttons, again, some basic styles to color it. Give it a border radius, border bottom, border left. We're making it into like a chunky button. That's what these things do right here. Bit of padding, a cursor, display block, position relative, top zero. Uh, when it's active, so when we press it, the border bottom width is two pixels and the top is three pixels. So this is a little effect we're applying right here using the top and the border width and stuff to make it look like we're pressing a button into the page. We'll see that in a second. But again, I mean, this stuff is not really important. The HTML and the CSS is secondary. I just wanted to build a front end which didn't look absolutely tripe. <laughs> so um, yeah, don't worry about the CSS. Then for the image inside the thumbnail div, we say max width is 100%. All right, so now we wanna preview this in a browser. Open this up and cancel out of this process. I've just realized I've completely misspelled this, but never mind. Anyway, node app again. So now we can view this in a browser at port 4000. All right, so this is what it looks like in a browser. Not too shabby, doesn't look amazing, but not tripe. So we have a form at the top right here. This is for the video metadata. So we're gonna type in our description or rather our video title right here. Then we generate the metadata and it's gonna output the response here and here. And then down here, we describe the image, generate the thumbnail and output it right here. And this is the placeholder image to begin with. So that's gonna get updated. So this is how it looks. Now we need to implement the functionality because at the minute, if we do this, it's just gonna refresh the page. We don't have any JavaScript sending a post request. So let's do that now. All right then, so remember, inside the HTML, we link to the index.js file and that's where we're gonna be sending the post requests. And we're gonna do that when these forms right here have been submitted and then we're gonna output the responses in these different divs right here. So we need basically to grab these different elements from the DOM, the forms and where we're outputting them. And then we need to handle the submission of these forms right here. And then we need to inject content into these divs, right? Now to speed things up, I've already grabbed the forms using query selector. So the meta form and the image form using these classes. And then the output elements where we're gonna output the data we get back, we have as well description tags and thumbnails and that's the p tag inside description, the p tag inside tags, and then the image tag inside the thumbnail div, all right? So I've also added event listeners to both of the forms, the meta form and the image form right here. So when we submit that, we fire an asynchronous function and pass in the event object. Now it needs to be asynchronous because we're sending asynchronous requests. We're gonna be using the await keyword. And inside the functions to begin with, we say e.preventDefault, and that prevents the default action of the form being submitted, which is to refresh the page. So we're not gonna be doing that. So we'll start with this one, and we want to send a post request to our API and send along the value that a user has typed into this input field right here, okay? So let's do that first. Okay, so we can say const response is equal to await. Then we're gonna use the fetch API and we're gonna fetch from forward slash open API. So this is gonna be localhost port 4000 forward slash open API forward slash, I think it was meta, wasn't it? For the metadata. All right, so we're sending a post request, meaning we have to say inside the second argument, which is an object that the method is gonna be post like so, okay? So after that, we want some headers to say the content type. So we say content hyphen type, and that is going to be application forward slash JSON, like so. And then after the headers, we can say the body, so the data that we're sending along with this, and we need to send a JSON string. So we say json.stringify, and then we pass in the object, which has the title property. Now the title is gonna be from the meta form. So that's this element that we grabbed right here. And then we can say dot, and then the name of the input. So if we go back to the HTML, we see the name is title. So we can say dot title. So dot title, and then get the value of that by saying dot value. So we're sending in the value of that input form as the title property right here, which is what is expected if we go to the OpenAI controller up here, we expect a title property on the body. And that's what we're sending right here, a title property. Okay, cool. So 
that's the um, the fetch request, the post request. So now down here, we can get the response. So const data is equal to await response.json and invoke that to pass it into an object that we can work with. We can log that data to the console if you want as well. We can see it, console.log data, but also I want to update the description and also the tags div. So we have those two fields right here, that p tag and this p tag. So I'm going to say description dot text contents is equal to the data we get back, which is this thing right here. Then it's dot description. Because remember, we have the description property on it. If we go to the OpenAI controller, go down here, we have a description property and a tags property. So we want the description property. And then on that, there is a content property. So we're getting the content of that re um, response. Okay, so the other thing we need to do is set the tags. So tags.text content is equal to data.tags this time dot content. All right. Cool. So we've done that. Now we want to do the same thing for the image down here. So let me copy all this and paste it in because it's going to be pretty similar. So then this time it's going to be to forward slash image. And then it's still going to be a post request JSON. And this time it's the image form and then dot prompt. That is the name of, I think this thing right here. Yes, it is prompt and then dot value. And that's also going to be a prompt property that we expect. And then what else do we need to do? So we have the response, we have the data, we console log the data. Okay, so all we need to do is update the image. So we can say thumbnail, which remember, is this thing right here. So that's the image tag, then we can set the attribute. And we want to set the source attribute and it's going to be the data. And then we send back, I think, a URL property on it. Yep, we do. So data.url. So we're updating the source with the URL that we get back. All right, cool. So fingers crossed, this should all work. All right then, so let's give this a whirl. I'm going to say right here, Python crash course. I'm going to send this request. And while that's working, I'm going to come down here and describe the image. And I will say Python in a space suit floating through space. All right, generate the thumbnail, let's scroll up. Okay, so now we have the description back, which is cool. And then down here we have the different tags as well, which is good. So let's go down here and wait for the image now. Oh, it's done. So there we go, there's a Python, I think in a space suit, <laughs> floating through space, awesome. So there we have it. We have now completed this little mini project where we're interacting with OpenAI to generate some content, both in text format and in image format. So then my friends, hopefully now you've got a better grasp of how OpenAI works and how we can leverage the power of AI into our own applications. Let me know what you think about it and if you'd want to see any more kind of AI related content in the future. So then my friends, I really, really hope you enjoyed this series and you learned something along the way. If you did, please, please, please don't forget to share, subscribe and like. That really means a lot. And if you want to access all of my YouTube courses without adverts, also get access to premium courses and early access courses as well, you can do at netninja.dev. You can sign up for NetNinja Pro, which is just $9 a month and also half price for the first month with this promo code right here. And for that, like I said, you get access to every course without adverts, without YouTube adverts. You also get access to exclusive courses not found anywhere else. You get access to my premium courses on Udemy and also early access to all of my YouTube courses as well. So the link to this page to sign up is going to be down below. Again, I really hope you enjoyed this series and I'm going to see you in the very next one.